first, I thought it was a disastrous idea. I, I, I didn't want to do it at all. I think First Blood is, uh, I think, the best action film I've ever done. Hi, my name is Hervé Atia. I travel uh, to uh, Canada, British Columbia to uh, visit uh, and share with you the filming uh, location of First Blood. So uh, sit back, relax, enjoy the ride. And by the way, uh, uh, there is nothing wrong with your two speakers. It's just my uh, strong uh, French accent. We went up to a place called Hope, Canada. And Hope was a great place, but it, it didn't reflect the name. It was highly depressed. Everyone was being laid off at the mills. So there's a lot of angry loggers around, if you know what I mean. Morning. He, he was a veteran of the Korean War. And the Korean veterans were basically forgotten. Visiting somebody around it's, it's like a war that no one recognized. And here he sees a Vietnam vet. So this became personal between the sheriff and Rambo. It had nothing to do with him being a vagrant or having something to eat. It was like, oh, my war was better than your war. North. I'll jump in. I'll make sure you're heading the right direction, huh? This is the famous bridge where Sheriff Kissel dropped off Rambo, only three miles from the downtown. And this road does not lead to Portland, but to the location of Coqui Alak Canyon, where they shot the man unseen, the cliff, the military camp. And we got a whole bunch of guys like you in this town, that's why. It's a quiet little town. In fact, you might say it's boring. I think they are coming. But that's the way we like it. And I get paid to keep it that way. Portland, straight ahead. If you want some friendly advice, the haircut and take a bath. You wouldn't get hassled so much. Hope this ride helped you out. I remember they took us out to a, a crazy, freezing cold, and I now was starting to sink uh, a little further into the melancholy of the landscape. And I started to feel lethal. I started to feel very tough, very hard. And when I was walking across that bridge, I met them. And when Brian Denny backs up, gets out of the car, there were some very terse moments. Uh, came to me later on, he said. Where the hell do you think you're going? I thought, hey, you're going to stab me. I'm talking to you, goddamn. Yeah, well, I wouldn't stab you with the character. Let me see some ID. All right, you're under arrest. You hear me? Now put your hands on the car. Now you put your hands on the car and you spread them. How you do it, you decide right now. Okay, we are at the cross street of Wallace and Third Avenue. The sheriff's office was right there on the lawn of the district hall. Of course, the building has been destroyed after the filming. So this is probably uh, difficult for you to uh, imagine uh, the scene. So let me uh, refresh your mind. Make sure you bring your hat. 
25 years ago, John Rambo came to Vietnam. He was a tough soldier. The toughest I ever fought. A hero. The hero of all the heroes. He was trained with no pain. My last question I asked Rambo 25 years ago, he never answered me. I want you to answer me today. I always want to know the truth from the Pentagon about my country, the socialist Vietnam. Now, you answer me. Tell me, answer me. The four, you got my mother.
shit. Oh, no way, man. Oh. This is one of those stunts which I'm very proud of. Uh, this is Buddy Joe Hooker. It's interesting to note that we had done this twice. I was asked to do it a third time, and the trick was to basically abandon yourself and try to catch the branch right on the soft spot of the stomach, kind of like with the indentation. Well, I, I twisted and I cut it on the rib, so I broke my rib, the uh, lower rib, and I fell to the ground, so it was pretty easy to act out the pain. Yes, this was a place, this was a place of the rainbow tree here. The tree is gone. That's sad. Well, uh, maybe you don't trust me. Well, just over here. Oh, it's not too far. <laughs> how long is uh, how long to get there? Five minutes from up the up the dam. Oh, Johnny! Hey, Johnny! Hey, soldier boy! Okay, maybe we should uh, spread out. Right. Minor. Sorry, over there. 
Hey, John, can you come out? We're doing a documentary. Be careful. There might be some flammable gases in there. Yeah, don't light anything. <laughs> Okay, well, you know, it's kind of depressed. No one's working here. Why don't you just blow up the town? And guess what? They did. doesn't look it, trust me people.
Hey Scott, what's up? Hey, <laughs> nice to meet you. So, uh, my name is Hervé Atia. Once again, uh, I travel to uh, Canada, British Columbia to visit the first flood filming location and finally uh, to complete the quest. So, in fact, I came here um, six months ago and uh, I spotted uh, the place, but you found it. So uh, my dad and I decided to put a boat in the water and we went up to where Hervé was. And then uh, when we we're up there, I realized that uh, if you look at this, this little mountain here, it all lines up with the riverbank. So what I basically did is, uh, well, my dad and I, we came down here and we just kept going until it lined up. And then, uh, yeah, I looked over. It's a, it's a pretty desolate area. Walked up and around the back there, uh, we realized we found the field and then the road and and uh, yeah and then I got in touch with Airbay right away to, to let them know. So we're gonna we're gonna show you uh, around. So let's start by the Belmore home. So the Delmore home was here. Now everything uh, disappeared. So look what I found. Uh, it looks like an old um, Coca-Cola can, original test. All the tape, radio, cassette. Yeah, yeah the burner uh, back on the other side of this. Uh, yeah, it's simply left over. You can see it's been charred from the, uh, from the fire. I mean, it's back there. There's a natural stove back there. Uh, thank you, Scott, for uh, your hard work. <laughs> so, what do we have inside? Yeah, it's the outhouse. Unbelievable. This was the toilet of Delmore Berry family. So, we can see uh, actually the hall um, of the hook here, where um, the widow was hanging her clothes. What time will he be back? He died. What? Died last summer. Died how? Cancer. Brought it back from man. All that orange stuff that spread it around. Cut him down to nothing. I could lift him off the sheep. In fact, Stallone uh, was standing here and the Delmore widow was uh, at your spot. Actually, uh, the weather is not with us, but Scott, uh, you went uh, one month ago and you took some great shots of the Golden Bear uh, over there. You can see the Golden There is a fire pit here at the same spot where our Stallone uh, throw his, uh, his address book. So maybe we can find something here. Uh. Do you have your, your Swiss knife with you? Ah, that's what I'm talking about. This. Let's dig, uh, let's dig inside the fire pit. Hey, look what I found. The Stallone address book. Not kidding. Danzy Rambo, Dunford, Westmore, Bronson, Ortega, Soldier Boy, hey, Soldier Boy. So I'm gonna call uh, John Rambo. The number is six uh, oh four eight uh, six nine two zero two 
One. Sylvester Stallone. Hello? Hey, John G. What's up? Ah. Hey, good news. We finally uh, found the Delmore property. The quest is over. Nothing is over. Nothing. You just don't turn it off. It wasn't my war. You asked me, I didn't ask you. And I did what I had to do to win. But somebody wouldn't let us win. This is uh, the cabin uh, that you see uh, when uh, Rambo is uh, walking down the road. Okay, this is the end. I hope you uh, enjoy the movie. Today the weather was not with us. This is a tough cloud uh, weather. So uh, see you in a bit and uh, take care. got a call from my agent. It was uh, late on a Saturday afternoon. The good part is they want you to play Colonel Troutman. That's the good part. The second part, they want you to start Monday. Richard arrived during the day. He flew up from Los Angeles. That night he was shooting. And he said, Ted, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where this character is going. You've got to just feed me line by line. And just how and where the former Green Beret came into possession of the weapons with which he allegedly killed one deputy sheriff and tried to kill six others. Only their skill training and police enforcement techniques saved their lives. And word now is... So this is the best place to, uh, to remember uh, the actor uh, Richard Crenna when he appears for the first time in a movie for blood because he was just standing right there. Never possessed God in heaven to make a man like Rambo. God didn't make Rambo. I made him. Who the hell are you? Sam Trotman. Colonel Samuel Trotman. Over. Anything? He took a radio off of one of my deputies. And he has to be listening. If I was in his position, I'd try to pick up some information. Of course he's listening. He's not going to break radio silence. No. Covey leader calling Raven. Covey leader to identify Baker T. Rambo. Mesner. Ortega, Coletta, Jorgensen, Danforth, Barry. Baker team, they're all dead, sir. Not Delmore Barry. He made it. Barry's gone too, sir. How? Got himself killed in now. Didn't even know it. Cancer ate him down to the bone. I'm sorry, I didn't know. I'm the last one, sir. It's good to hear your voice,
Now, tell me. Answer me. Tell me, answer me, or I'll cut you. Davo, you're going to suddenly.